going, so I'm not going to finish that thought. Okay, so animal and yeah. reverb, who is for some reason being called Weaver. Okay, there was a news article and video that came out recently. Why don't you start talking about why you were had the interview and what that was like? Uh, so the interview, we uh, we were going for the interview to get uh, attention drawn to kind of drawn to uh, our mission, uh, drawn to uh, uh, bring awareness to uh, the Hope event in Chicago, trying to get donations for it to to raise money to help us help everyone that we can. Animal, anything else? You wanna, uh, yeah, I mean, that whole week we part. were on something we call Hero Week, and the goal was to go around to a different city every night. In every city, we would get a news story done about us. Two cities were, were the only two cities that uh, that came out for the news stories, and only one of them made it to air, and it happened to be Weaver's favorite day, you know? What cities did y'all go to? All right, let's see if I can do this. I always forget one city, but let's see if I can do this. Lansing, North Manchester, Fort Wayne, Kokomo, Indianapolis, Lafayette, and Chicago. What was it like in each city? Like, was were any of them boring, or were any of them particularly exciting? What typically happened each night? Each city had its own kind of a feel to it. I wouldn't necessarily say boring. Just uh, some did have more, were a little bit more eventful than the others. Wh which one was it? Animal Indianapolis? Where we bit off more than we can chew? <laughs> yeah. Yes, Indianapolis. Yeah. Indianapolis deserves its own hope. Yeah, we got to j just one of the locations that were mentioned. Uh, and just as we were pulling in, uh, we spotted uh, three people on the grass next to the highway sleeping, one person out on the road holding a sign, another person on the corner. So we pulled in right away, helped them, unloaded uh, the wagon, unloaded the supplies. We went less than a block before we found about three or four more at a, an intersection island. Uh, and then Void and I crossed the road while Animal went back to grab uh, more supplies, some coats to hand out to the people on the island. And Void and I found three to five other people uh, that we hand supplies out to. And in just that 30 to 40 minutes alone, we pretty much ran out of supplies and had to make a trip to get more. So that was definitely... That was definitely a busier day than the others, and uh, I, I, do, I think it does bring a lot of attention to Indianapolis needing its own uh, hope event. On the opposite end of that spectrum, I'd like to talk about Lafayette. Lafayette, we, we ran into a couple of people from, uh, was it North Carolina? Yes. And uh, they, they were in need of some help. But other than that, it seemed like Lafayette had great homeless pro programs at least in the area we were at, and um, pretty much any homeless we came up to would say, "Oh no, I'm I'm fine. I get all my stuff from from this housing place." And and uh, it, it seems like Lafayette's really taking care of their homeless, and it it kind of made me happy to see that, even though that meant we couldn't really do what we were there to do. Did you do much research on this yet, or do you by chance know why Indianapolis has such a huge problem with people being unhoused? I have not done any research, uh, but I, I mean, I could assume it's it, it would be for the same reason Chicago has, has those issues. A bigger city, higher population, meaning higher homeless population as well, or, or, or unhoused population. But no, I, I haven't really done any research on it. You said you handed out supplies. What kind of supplies did you hand out? Uh, we handed out uh, a little... I don't think I have any more with me, but we uh, handed out tote bags, but they had the basic hygienic things, toiletries, toilet paper, toothbrush, toothpaste. Uh, some of them had hand sanitizer, bombas. Hashtag bombas. Um, uh, and then uh, something important to uh, Reverb had brought along feminine hygiene packs, oh, which, okay. which uh, we did give out at least one of those that I know of, maybe more. But I, I feel like the feminine hygiene packs is something that a lot of real-life superheroes don't think about when making packages. Right. Ministration can 
pose a sanitary issue whenever you're unhoused, so it's important to have the supplies for people who need it. For people who don't know what HOPE is, could you explain that? The HOPE okay. event. <laughs> the um, HOPE event. Yeah, the, the HOPE event, if I remember correctly, HOPE stands for Homeless Outreach Project Effect. Basically, what we try to do at a HOPE event is we try to reach out as many ho- unhoused as we can. It's so hard to, to get used to saying unhoused instead of homeless, um, which we've probably been saying homeless our whole lives, but I'll, I'll get better. Unhoused <laughs> to try and not necessarily give them a hand out, but give them a hand up. Give them some inspiration, some hope to maybe uh, get up and better their own lives. For this Chicago Hope event, have you been working closely with the original Hope Force? Um, no. Chicago Hope was, I believe, don't fully quote me on all of this, but I believe that Hope Chicago was started by, by someone branching off of the original Hope Force. And as, as far as the original Hope Force, the only person I can think of is Razor Hawk. I'm, I'm not sure who, who else was on the original Hope Force, but really it's just the XJL Heartland that's, uh, that's been the main drive of Chicago Hope this year. For a Hope event, what all goes into that? Like, I imagine there are a ton of logistics involved. Yeah, I mean, um, really Patriotier is the one that's spearheading all of that. So I'm not even quite sure what all goes into that. Um, a lot of route planning. Um, a lot of planning of supplies, a lot of, just a lot of planning. And uh, Patrioteer seems to be really good at, at that sort of thing. So it's it's a good thing that he's spearheading that and not me. <laughs> Does it usually take a lot of supplies? Like, how soon do you usually need the supplies before the actual event? Uh, I'm just going off of uh, how I kind of do things would be uh, the general thing, too, was I usually try to get supplies usually a week or two before I actually do an outreach. Little uh, boxes right here. I try to keep those kind of filled up so we can uh, have things ready to go. But but yeah, probably good four or five, six weeks in advance for something like Hope. Just in case Reverb was cutting out too much again, to reiterate, for a normal event, We'd like to get stuff one to two weeks in advance to check that we have enough packs. For a big HOPE event, we would like to get stuff a month, a month and a half in advance to make sure that we have everything set up for the event. Right. This event's going to be on September the 11th in 2021. So you're going to need plenty of time to make sure that you get the supplies, not just the supplies, but you're going to need that money fully in advance so that you can actually afford to get everything that you'll need. Right. Not only does it go towards supplies, but it also goes towards things like U-Haul trucks. In some cases, maybe even helping people have have uh, housing for the night, just, just depending on what's going on. That, that money goes towards a lot of stuff other than just the supplies, but it is all necessary for hope. So yes, uh, we, we would need it sooner than later <laughs> how much money are you planning to raise for the event was it was it a thousand was it five thousand it was five thousand okay we set a big goal for ourselves but we don't believe it was too big of a goal we believe that we can raise that five thousand dollars right now we're sitting at 170 dollars with more that i need to throw in from cash donations that I've been handed. I wholeheartedly believe that uh, we, we can make this goal of $5,000. We just have to find creative ways to get people's attention. What are some creative ways that you've been thinking of so far? Well, we can't say much, I don't think, with, uh, with what we are planning that should be out uh, within the next couple weeks. But I guess I, I will... Give a little tease. Do you remember the ice bucket challenge that went viral and went around? Yes, I remember that. We are in the middle of trying to create our own viral challenge for hope. 
And I will tell you the name of it, but I won't tell you the challenge. You'll have to wait to see what the challenge is. But it is called the Two Gallon Challenge. As long as it's a safe challenge. Not like what yeah. they're doing on TikTok these days. Yeah, no, it's, it's totally safe. It's a way to promote good health as well as, as hope. We will not be drinking two gallons of water in one sitting now. <laughs> okay, because that was a bit of a concern. Don't drink that much water, you'll die. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Are you going to be live streaming this challenge? Because I know that lately, um, on a recent episode of Heroes 101 web show, they were talking about raising money by having people do very short tricks or something for each donation to raise money for different hope events, not just hope Chicago, but others too. Yeah. I mean, this challenge isn't something that we are doing live. It definitely is not limited to not going live. If, if people want to go live with it, they definitely can for us just pushing the challenge to start off we are doing kind of a mashup collaboration video where would people learn about this and about the event in general well in hopefully a week or so uh, we will be having uh, a full xjl heartland page uh, we are gonna start using that a little bit more often to try and post uh, videos or uh, donation things anything that XJL Heartland is doing or promoting at the moment. Uh, I imagine we will be posting on that a lot more. All right, awesome. Also for the fundraiser, I'll be linking that in the video description so that people can donate. Awesome. That, 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 that's great. Anyway, so about the thing that's been the talk in the RLSH community for <laughs> the past week, how do you feel personally, your honest thoughts about a news station getting your name wrong uh, honestly, I, I don't have hard feelings. Uh, Animal did point out to me, I think, later that day or the day after. During the interview at the beginning, the guy did say, uh, state your name and, and spell it. But I thought he said, state your name and title. I, I misheard him. And I, I was thinking, like, title? What title? I don't have a title. <laughs> so I, I just said reverb and kind of moved on from there. So... He, he misheard me, and uh, it probably could have been avoided if I had heard him right and actually spelled my name. So it's definitely not his fault. And then uh, the news station not making any changes. I think I read somewhere from someone uh, it would have been uh, a hassle. Like they, they could change it in the uh, article and all, but it's it's already in the news story and the video, so there wouldn't have been much, much of a point to... Uh, change it. Sorry, something popped up and distracted me. I was just wondering why they didn't simply fix that one word because I remember when I emailed them about it and also about the missing XJL information, they added the link I suggested for the XJL. Yeah, I, uh, I remember reading that and it, that was in the back of my mind for a minute. I'm all like, okay, well, they definitely read that because you know she said they added the link, but yeah, the, the hell with my name, I guess. So I guess this is me now. Uh, well, it, it could have been worse, I guess. I mean, we've heard so many different horror stories about journalists completely twisting things in order to make a few extra bucks on their paper. Oh, definitely. But there's been so many memes. How do you feel being memed to death? I, I don't. I don't really have a problem with it. Uh, the uh, original Reaver meme did come from Reverb, so it, it did. Uh, which, which one? Yeah, it was. Uh, the amazing the Weaver. Yeah, the. I think when we were driving out to the city we were going to that day, that scene from the first Spider-Man movie with Tobey Maguire popped in my mind, where the guy's all like, "What's your name?" Oh, human Spider. Oh, that sucks. And he's like, "Spider-Man." He's all like, "No, he got my name wrong. I don't care. Get out there." No, like, oh, well, <laughs> that's me, I guess. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, grow, uh, growing up with my friends uh, in school, high school, college, uh, no matter where I went, I was always uh, a class clown. So it, it wasn't always for the center of attention. I just I just got a kick out of making people laugh. So for the, the community coming together to laugh at, at, 
to laugh at it this much is uh it, it's kind of nice uh, are you thinking about perhaps funneling that attention and using those memes to help further promote the fundraiser you know i hadn't thought about it but there there could be something i could i could probably think about down the way maybe i don't know a, a nest or funnel or something people can drop money in i, I guess i would just have to accept everyone really calling me weaver at that point <laughs> so are you going to like change your name or are you just going to have one of those dual names where your main name's reverb and then your nickname's weaver yeah i guess i'm i'm, I'm definitely keeping reverb i guess i am just going to accept weaver being my code name's nickname <laughs> I've, I've just got i've got so many names so I'll have to add that to the aliases on your wiki page then. <laughs> Batman, the Dark Knight. Reverb, the Weaver. <laughs> uh, so moral of the story is always state your name and spell it or else somebody's <laughs> going to mishear you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, So yeah, I've got... It, it's a big portion on me that I didn't spell it. So yeah, I've got... I held no resentment or anything towards the the guy that did the recording or the news story or the uh the news station at all if anyone wants to um see all of these memes that that we're referencing here uh on facebook you can look up the hashtag reverb or weaver and uh you'll be able to see practically all the memes that are being made i'll add an easy link in the description so people can search that with just a click are um, there any other thoughts that you'd want to say to people about uh, any of this? Oh, any of this? Um, no, not, not nothing I can think of now. Uh, just bringing it back to hope. Something that I kind of say a lot is, you know, together we can do a whole lot of good in this world. And I wholeheartedly believe that. I can't do it by myself. Reverb can't do it by himself. Together, me and him just the two of us were able to make a whole week of hero work happen, which that shows the power of two. Sometimes the occasional guest star, Patrioteer, Void, they, they, they came out for a day each, but, uh, but it really shows the power of what two people can do. Imagine what a hundred people can come together and do. Um, it really shows the importance of teamwork and collaboration and focusing on the mission because it really does take all of us. Every little bit we do matters in the end. Also, exactly. I saw that video where you both got your XJL badges. How do you feel about yes. that? Go ahead. Yeah, I, I was overwhelmed uh, with, with pride. Uh, I'll go ahead and let Reverb talk because I can do a lot of talking. <laughs> It was. I was definitely excited when when I was first starting out. I saw the whole XJL team and group and everything, and it was, you know, I, I felt like kind of small time. I guess uh, essentially, uh, Dick Grayson just becoming Robin, and then like, oh, okay, yeah, and then there's the whole Justice League, and he's like, oh, yeah, I'll just do my thing over here. It's pretty cool. So so that was kind of how I saw the XJL was. You know, I'm. I'm just doing this and pretty much by myself, maybe a couple people here and there. But to see a whole big team like the XJL so organized with so many great hearted people doing so much of the work, you know, it was, it was amazing to see. And I didn't really dream, dream about it, but, you know, it was, it was great to see uh, such a, a good team out there. And then uh, being, being invited to it was uh, completely unexpected. It caught me off guard. I was, uh, I was really humbled by it. To to think that a team that great is, you know, noticing my efforts, uh, and then to be uh, brought on as a full time to be brought on as a full time member was, uh, was was just an incredible feeling. Uh, as a DC fan, uh, just looking up to the Justice League pretty much my whole life, and to feel like I've actually been brought into the Justice League is. You know, just a great feeling. To add to that, um, kind of a, a realization I had going through all of this, 
when Reverb and I were invited to be initiates for, for the XJL, that's kind of how we thought it worked. The XJL saw how, you know, how you were doing in the real life superhero community, and they would invite you based on your merits. Then I, after a conversation I had with Impact, I realized that people generally just be like, hey, I'd like to be a part of the XJL. And they'd be like, well, okay, let's, let's you know, check you out. And then you're on your probationary period. And then we'll see from there. So uh, when Reverb and I were added on based on our merits, that not only was that kind of how we expected for the XJL, but it just, it really made us proud. It made us feel like our past didn't hold us back, which I guess to your viewers, what I mean by that, if you want to look up the Michigan protectors and Don't. hear about uh, that drama, <laughs> but we, we came out of that. We, we moved past our former leader. Uh, we came out of his shadow and we proved ourselves to be valuable members of this community. And I, I can now say that without feeling cringy or thinking like I'm ego boosting. I could actually be proud of what I do in this community and, and say that I'm valuable w without feeling egotistical, which is huge because it, it, I, 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 as a person, I've never really found my own value before. So finding it through the animal is a, a big thing. Knowing that you've done things and you've actually made good and you've done good work. That is a very sweet reward, much sweeter than anything else. Much better than people thinking good things of you. You know for a fact that you're doing those good things. Right. Do you think that you have better resources or that it's much better for you to be working with XJL compared to whenever you were working alone? Yes. More specifically, the XJL Heartland, I, I think we've kind of created our own um, circle of resources. Even even with Hero Week, for the most part, it came out of our own pockets, which is what we had always done. Everything always came out of our own pockets. When we became a part of the XJL, you know, we, we heard, oh, now, now we have this, this resource we could tap into, but we never really got a chance to tap into it. But with Patrioteer hooking up with Bombas and, and hooking up with uh, uh, all of his resources through Patrioteer, uh, we have found the benefit of, of having that team. What would you say to somebody who would want to join the XJL or another big team like that? Assuming the person is 18 or older. Uh, something I always say to uh, people that are interested uh, actually, recently there was a girl at work. She is 17, so I'm. I didn't give her a whole lot of information about it, but I told her a few details about uh, where I was the last week, and that I had been doing volunteer work, and it was a little unusual volunteer work, but it was volunteer work. And she was she was curious. She I, I didn't ask her if she'd be interested. I didn't ask her if she'd ever thought about it. But she peeked up herself and started asking about it and said that she had thought about doing volunteer work. Uh, a big thing is not asking someone if they want to do volunteer work, but if they bring it up themselves, because this is uh, it, it's really something that you have to have in your own heart and in your own mind. Uh, it's not something you can ask someone to do, because if you ask them to do it, they, they might be into it for a few weeks, a few months, a year or two. But then eventually they're like, this, you know, I don't, I don't really want to do this. I'm only doing it because they asked me to. Yeah, no, this is, if they come forward and they want to do this themselves with, uh, with their own heart and, and their own mind with, with their time, they're definitely going to last a lot longer. It's something you have to have inside of you, something that you want to do. It's not really a, uh, hey, come do this with me kind of thing. It's a, uh, I'm doing this, and whether you want to or not is up to you. And and for people who, who do have the passion to volunteer um, and want to do this, I would say that the important part about real-life superhero is not the superhero part. The important part is the real life. The, the work is the more important part. Suiting up, 
you know, do, doing what we do in the uniform, yes, that has its its purposes, but it is not the most important part of being a real-life superhero. Right. I think everybody can agree with that. 